Ready for the British Nationals in Cornwall this weekend, driving from London to Falmouth. Let's go. Driving in London is not actually that much fun. It's mostly sitting and waiting. I thought the traffic would end once we're out of London, but it's just continuing all the way to Bristol. Right. <laughs> oh. Still not in Cornwall, still not in Cornwall. we continue the journey. <laughs> and finally, we got some open road. We made it to Cornwall. Finally. Right, money of competition. Got my bananas, let's roll. Woo! Oh, I can't see out the windscreen. I can't see out the windscreen. Oh, look at that cracking new key morning. After some more winding Cornish roads, we eventually made it to the seaside and the start location for the competition. Right guys, area, that headland, near head, with a little bit of leeway of about 100 metres in case you get caught down there in the tide, but don't take the piss. Special time, uh, more watch, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> The man, the legend, the champ. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I hate talking to you. Why? Why just talk to me? Just, just like... Because I have this damn fluffy thing staring, tickling my chin. <laughs> Time to kill the fish. The competition lasts for six hours and the only mode of transport is feet or flippers. Prior to the competition, I'd been looking at the marine charts and I decided that I was going to swim to the eastern headland. Last words. It's a beautiful day, um, hopefully there's some fish, it's a very nice day, good weather, sunshine, good people, and uh, flat water, look at it, pretty damn good. And just like that, we were off. Conditions couldn't have been much better. Flat seas, great visibility, and the thing that gets most British people excited, sunshine. The water temperature was a tropical 15 degrees. On my swim out to the point, I decided to do a few dives along the way, just to see if there was any good ground I was missing out on. And thus started my day of very unfortunate events that could have easily been avoided. Firstly, I see this shoal of pollock. They were all small fish, but I thought something definitely has to be hanging around with them. And, of course, there was. Off in the distance, a school of silverfish come towards me. Instantly, I think bass, and of course, bass, sure. But, they're all very small. Then I think maybe I should shoot that mullet up the top, and then, oh wait, the bass, uh oh. Yeah, nothing. I continue out to the headland, where the whole entire way I wonder, will I see another bass for the rest of the day? Spoiler alert, another fail. I finally make it to forementioned headland and first dive down, I see a nice pollock. I think, ooh, this is going to be good. And then I see another pollock. This is a really good sized fish. And I go to shoot and completely miss over the top. This is when the little voice in my head says, you should not have shortened your rubbers the week before a competition when you were rigging your gun to go to Norway. It's just one of those things with competition diving. You don't change any of your gear the week before a competition. I was a little nervous seeing as I'd just blown a really great fish. I didn't load the gun all the way to the back notch in hopes that it wouldn't overpower the small spear. Finally, a fish on the board, only nine more pollock to go. In this clip here, out of habit, you can just see I've loaded to the very back notch of the spear. And you can guess what happens here. My confidence was super low right now. So back to the bottom to try and get another pollock. And the mistake on this dive was not having a longer gun on my float to shoot these fish. You could definitely shoot them with the 80 centimeter gun, but it just would have been so much easier with my 110.
I got my act together a little bit on this dive. My confidence was a little bit further up now that I'd shot a couple f Oh no, missed again. After giving myself a few uppercuts on the surface, I breathed up properly, got down to the bottom and waited patiently for a good shot. Missed three pollock and shot three pollock. Not doing so good, but there's lots of fish here, so I might stick around a bit longer. I managed to get another two pollock from the headland, but the current changed and the fish just disappeared. So I moved up into the shallows, where of course, I shot a mullet and lost it. The shallows were loaded with bait and I got my opportunity at another bass. I followed this guy for around 10 minutes before I was presented with a shot. And you guessed it, completely missed. I was having an absolute shocker. I couldn't hit the side of a barn with a fistful of gravel. And this dogfish that was asleep on the bottom, I put a pad shot in and it tore off. Lucky for me, they don't swim very fast. And all too soon, the competition was over. Overall disappointing, I missed a lot of fish. Dan Bailey had done really well on the Pollock. Yeah, it's all right. First time I've shot a fish in the national, so good result for me. <laughs> Look at that. One dogfish. Ross captured what is quite possibly the first Benito to ever be speared in the UK. That's the booty. What is it? Benito. What, in these waters? Yeah. I think it got lost. Two, five, two, five. Oh, yeah. That one's not something you get every day. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> A fine bass shot by Neil Crawford. No rush, don't you? One dogfish. Rock salmon. See rock salmon. No, no, salmon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One of my pollock was a little touch and go. Yep. Easy. Certainly. Five. 100% definitely. Five, six, seven, five. End of. Fifth place. Say no more. <laughs> Sixth pollock. Just nipped me by. Oh, thank God we got 12, 12 points. Kev. <laughs> Sorry about that, buddy. It's alright, mate. I can live with it. <laughs> <laughs> In the third place is Dan Man. Yay! There we go, Maddy. Thank you well very much. Done. Cheers. Good Good job. Job. Good job. In second place, but a very good percentage today because that puts him in. Is he here? Yes. Yeah, he is. <laughs> well done, Ross. Thanks, buddy. So, at least one person, Dan Bailey. To be honest, I was a little disappointed with how I went in the end. I saw so many fish, but I just didn't capitalize on those opportunities on the day. But there's always next year.